I'm Don. Today we paint a huge resin miniature from Creature Caster. Today's video talks about painting huge models or even smaller models and painting them really fast and furious. I'm not talking about slap chop or speed paints or contrast paints and they usually end up very sloppy and rushed so i'm not talking about that i'll give you a couple of tips that will help you paint good display level ish painting without rushing or speeding up the painting process this ginormous miniature this is very heavy this is solid resin and it took me just a couple of days to finish the model there's a lot of compromises and we'll talk about that as you watch and see how i turned it into this i'm don welcome or welcome back to my channel this channel is supported by all these awesome brands and of course this channel won't be possible without the support of my patrons. Of course, you need an airbrush. You cannot speed up the painting of the base colors at the very least of any model or miniature without the use of airbrush. In this video though, we're not going to talk about the actual process of the painting because the step-by-step -step painting process using cuttlefish colors is actually uploaded already at the Creature Caster YouTube channel. Instead, I'll share with you some tips on how I finished this model in just a couple of days. The main problem of painting bigger models that are very big but are in 32 or maybe even 28 millimeter scale is that you have to do a lot of compromises by compromises meaning you cannot really paint all the leather parts or horns or teeth the same manner that you paint smaller models meaning your brush painting your highlighting and your shades are less detailed Le there's less definition the contrast is usually not that good i'm pretty sure you've seen painting of giant models like literally giant models that are pretty big like four inches or even bigger and you see that the skin painting is not that good there's not enough highlights to really bring out the volume of the skin there's not enough shades and it's just it it usually looks flat and uninteresting because the compromise is that they compromise the painting of the whole model not many people have the luxury to like really spend time on huge models and and paint them like they would paint a small model and what i mean by that is that ideally if you're painting a big model like this one but is in 32 millimeter scale the detailing and the painting of the details should be similar to how you paint a 32 millimeter like orc or smaller model so that will give nice definition to all the details also it will give a very nice sense of scale when you like put this beside models that are in the same scale but obviously this model this dragon is so much bigger so my main tip is to use an airbrush obviously Use the airbrush, try to maximize your airbrush by painting as much shade and as much highlight that your skill with the airbrush would allow. By that, I mean if you could paint like for example the frame of the wings with the airbrush, that would be great because you don't need to brush paint all those green skin as it transitions toward the reddish parts of the wings so as much skill as the airbrush or as much airbrushing as your skill will allow is very good if you're painting bigger miniatures another one is to plan your color scheme or the colors that you'll be using on the miniature make sure that they complement each other in that manner you you will have a, a miniature that will pop that will look really good and that will have striking colors and that will 
look good even with just the airbrush sketch. By maximizing the airbrush by painting lots of shades and highlights and using good colors that complement each other, you'll be happy with your painting just with the airbrush and the brush painting will be a bit minimal than usual. Now my final tip is to assign a focal point or decide a focal point for your miniature. With this one, it's the glowing chest and mouth. So everything, all of the painting that I did was to complement this look. Even the brush painting, I painted more details around the mouth or face and chest area to make sure that all your attention goes towards my focal point. In this manner, since the focal point of the miniature and the areas around it are well painted, you kinda like ignore that the rest of the model is not as well painted. Now before I reveal a ton of thanks to all my patrons, because without my patrons, this channel won't be possible. Now my main tip kinda allows you to look at the model and see all the compromises. I did not paint all of the horns, all of the claws, and I kinda neglected the painting of the back part of the model or even the tail and even the base of the model which is really awesome. So I only focus the painting on the head. And of course, the chest, making sure that the effect that it's glowing is achieved through painting and through airbrushing and then eventually detail painting with the brush. So by assigning a focal point to a miniature, whatever miniature that is, you'll be giving all your attention and time, limited time, in the painting of that focal point. So you don't really have to rush and be sloppy with the painting of the rest of the model. It's simply you just you can get away without painting the rest of the model as nicely as the areas around the focal point. I think this huge miniature deserves a little bit of my time so I wouldn't be surprised if I go back to this mini, paint a little bit more horns and claws and improve the painting of the base because this is such a beautiful miniature. But then again, I'm pretty happy with the result just by making sure that I have a focal point which is the glowing chest and face and mouth and I kinda got away from not painting the rest of the model as nicely as the areas around the focal point. That's it, Pansit. I hope you liked the video and watch these other videos.